Where will the best weather be for the total solar eclipse on April 8th, 2024? the burning question for eclipse chasers who are now making preparations and travel plans, but an incoming El Nino threatens to make things a little more complicated. The climate pattern in the Pacific Ocean, which occurs every few years, is now 95% certain to remain active in the Northern Hemisphere from January through March, and the chances are 80% from March through May according to the latest data from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's Climate Prediction Center. The world has experienced warmer than normal temperatures throughout 2023, and the year is well on its way to becoming the warmest year since pre-industrial times. It may also be the first year when the global average annual temperature temporarily breaches the 1.5 degrees Celsius mark set as a target in the 2015 Paris Agreement. El Nino is the warmer than normal phase of NSO, when the sea surface temperatures in the eastern and central equatorial Pacific Ocean are warmer than the average by more than 0.5 degrees Celsius. El Nino is generally known to bring warmer than normal temperatures to many regions around the world and disrupt other major weather systems such as the Indian summer monsoon. The World Meteorological Organization, WWMO, has said the ongoing El Nino event may continue until April 2024, further heating up global temperatures on land and the ocean. This could cause further rise in global average temperatures and fuel more extreme weather events, such as heat waves, wildfires and droughts. For India, it could mean a warmer than normal winter season in most of India and also a stormier than normal pre-monsoon season for northwest India. Let's understand the pattern and reason for the El Nino. If you think the name El Nino, then it sounds more like a folk story than a scientific phenomenon. You're on to something. During the 17th century, fishermen noticed periods of warmer water and poor fishing that would peak around Christmas time. They called it El Niño de la Navidad, which means the boy of the nativity or the Christmas child. It wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that scientists began to connect a variety of seemingly disconnected regional events scattered across the planet. By the mid 20th century, they found that these weren't regional occurrences, but phases of a global cyclical phenomenon called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. The NSO fluctuates with an average interval of five years, although the cycle can take anywhere between two and seven years. We've now been tracking these cycles for decades, but they've been around for much longer than that. To understand why the El Nino Southern Oscillation occurs, let's first look at what happens in the Pacific Ocean under normal conditions. Winds blow along the equator from east to west. This is a product of the Coriolis effect caused by the Earth's rotation. Here's a fun fact. If the Earth didn't rotate, air would circulate north-south from the high-pressure poles to the warmer, low-pressure region at the equator. As it happens, air does circulate off the poles, but it bends as it approaches the equator. In A, a circumferential band that extends 30 degrees north and south of the equator, sometimes known as the horse latitudes, air in the northern hemisphere deflects to the southwest and air in the southern hemisphere deflects to the northwest. This channel of westward moving air is called the trade winds. It turns out they're not just important if you're a pirate living in the 18th century. As the trade winds blow westerly across the Pacific Ocean, they drag warm water from coastal South America toward Asia. And as this warm water moves west, colder water rises to replace it, a phenomenon called upwelling. This cold water is rich in nutrients that feed phytoplankton, which in turn support ecosystems of fish and everything that feeds off them. So, 
As you can imagine, a shock to this system would have major domino effects on marine life. If this is what normal conditions look like in the Pacific Ocean, think of El Nino as a disruption of normal. During El Nino, the trade winds weaken. As they slow down, warm water that would be flowing toward Asia builds up instead near the coastal Americas, resulting in less upwelling cold water. This, in turn, creates a zone of warm air and water further east in the Pacific. With less upwelling, the fish that feed off the phytoplankton migrate or die. The Pacific jet stream that crosses North America moves south from where it normally occurs. As a result, the northern United States and Canada tend to become warmer and drier, whereas the Gulf Coast and large parts of coastal South America become wetter. Peru and Ecuador receive their wettest months from April to October, and during more severe El Nino years, rain and flooding in those regions can be catastrophic. On a global scale, the average surface temperature during El Nino rises 0.1 degrees Celsius. But not all El Nino events are severe, and some can be rather mild. Something to keep in mind before you hit the panic button. The average El Nino lasts from 9 to 12 months, but on rare occasions, they have lasted for years. The world's climate is a pretty complex system responding to a number of inputs. For fisheries, this can produce a feeding frenzy. And if you like salmon, well, you're in luck. During La Nina, cold water species like salmon will venture into typically warmer waters where they can't ordinarily survive. The same is also true of squid, in case you prefer calamari. Meanwhile, in Asia, the influx of warm equatorial water produces wet conditions, the opposite of the drought experienced during El Nino, causing a spike in tropical cyclones. In North America, the jet stream is pushed further north. This causes drought in the southwestern United States and rains in the Pacific Northwest. Well, depending on where you live, the news is either good or bad. The Atlantic often experiences a much more severe hurricane season during La Nina because the shift in the jet stream produces greater atmospheric instability in the South Atlantic. But the Pacific Basin actually sees fewer hurricanes, a sign of how drastically different these regional effects can be. Just don't get too complacent, Pacific dwellers. El Nino has the opposite effect as La Nina. Meanwhile, in Pacific coastal South America, you won't see the warm Christmas-time waters that once prompted fishermen to dub it El Nino de la Navidad. Indeed, there's a reason that fishermen once called La Nina El Viejo, or the old man. During La Nina, the weather in Peru and Chile turns colder and drier, sometimes producing severe periods of drought. So friends, what do you think about this event? Write your views in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get interesting videos.